This video will demonstrate using a Wago PFC200 with eCockpit to connect to a MySQL server. For this test, I'll be using a Wago 750-8202 PFC200, and for the MySQL server, I'll be using a Raspberry Pi on a dinner plate DIN mount. The very first thing, we're going to go into the uh, PHP My Admin of the Raspberry Pi. You should have seen this in part one of the video. Um, and what we need to do is just create a database and a table for our test. So we'll call this Wago Test Database, create this. And then we're going to create a table um, called Wago Test Table. We're just going to make this uh, two columns, very simple. Uh, column one we'll call uh, val1. We'll leave this as an integer. Um, Column two, we'll just make val2, just keep it easy. Um, we'll leave this as an integer as well. Once we've done this, we'll save it, and we're done in the database. We'll close this out, and now we'll open eCockpit. Um, we're gonna start by just creating an empty project. And once this opens uh, in the network view, we're gonna select our uh, hardware from the right. We're gonna pick an 8202. We could scan the network for this as well, but just for speed, we'll do this. Set the IP address um, and then scan uh, the PFC itself for the I.O. modules just so we can keep from getting any I.O. errors. We're done in the network side, now we'll go over to the programming side. Um, the very first thing for this test uh, on the program side is we're going to add the library. So uh, go to Library Manager, right-click, Add Libraries, and we're going to pick Wago App SQL underscore My SQL. Um, and for my project, I'm going to add uh, another library called uh, Wago App String, which will allow me to convert some bytes to strings. And then um, for my project, I created some uh, POUs externally, a couple of functions, and a visualization that will help us test this. So we'll import those. Now, the Wago libraries are very uh, nicely documented internally in eCockpit, so you can... Um, Go back into Library Manager and just navigate through the library if there are any data structures you don't understand or want a graphical view of the library. Okay, next we're going to go into the PLC program and we're going to declare all of our function blocks. So I've created some of these uh, variables externally. I'm just going to copy and paste them. We're going to start with the login block. I've created an instance of this. Um, and once I paste these variables, you'll see we just need to pass it some string values for credentials and uh, some bits to control and monitor this block. So um, we're going to paste all these into the function block. And uh, next we're going to go to the log out block. Of course, log in and log out are both the most um, important ones. So uh, again, we'll paste these variables. Most of these are just bits um, and status. Um, so we've got all of the variables now to log in, log out. Now we need to create our insert statement. So uh, use our input assistant again, instance calls, and wago, or fb mysql execute. Um, we're going to paste these values. Now, uh, the wago SQL language um, is a little bit different, I think, than most um, SQL uh, commands. So we just, um, we shed some... Uh, some commas and some some other things and since we've logged directly into the database itself um, we don't need to reference the database in our insert statement so we're just going to reference the table uh, and i've created a function that uh, will create these strings essentially you're just going to pass it the uh, sql function in strings so we'll create our statement uh, and now um, we need to create a query function block. So we'll pull the instance of the query function block by going to instance calls, uh, fb my SQL query. Uh, very similar to the execute block, we just need a statement. Um, in this case, um, the statement is just going to be select all, and then uh, more bit level variables. So you see we create our statement that's just select all from uh, Wago test table. And then I've created a function that will allow me to um, map the uh, returned bytes to uh, string values, which can be pretty helpful. There are many ways to do this. This is just a simple way I, I created it. So next, um, we'll map the uh, byte results to uh, an array of strings. Um, 
with my function, we're just going to pass it the results from the query block. And once they're free, uh, we're going to go ahead and log in. See, we've logged in without any errors. Uh, and once we run this, we'll navigate to the visualization where we can uh, have a UI control over this. So we log in. You can see that we're connected. We've got um, my res uh, MySQL insert uh, variables. So we insert these two variables, and you can see that we were able to query it. Next, we're just going to pass it some new values, 1, 2, 3 for val1, uh, 4, 5, 6 for val2. Once we insert that, you can see that we read it successfully. We'll log out, and that's it. Thank you very much for watching.